Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy-ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Just like that. Uh, before we jump into our episode tonight, we do have some announcements to get through, uh, beginning with our sponsor for this evening's festivities, Steam World Heist 2. Two. Sam, tell us about it. The sequel to the critically acclaimed indie video game Steam World Heist 2. Two is a hilarious turn-based tactical game that uses a unique ricochet gameplay mechanic that's kind of like playing billiards with guns. Pew pew, you ricochet shots off walls and ceilings. It's super fun. So while I tell you more, I'm going to challenge my fellow castmates to shoot me with Nerf guns. <laughs> but the trick is you have to ricochet off of Stuff that Robbie holds. I've been dreaming of this. <laughs> Why do you have one now? <laughs> because so. I'm next to Robbie okay. and I'm terrified. Yeah. Uh, I guess Talison's Wait, first. Oh. That's a nice, steady hand. <laughs> a little bit more of an angle. Here a little bit go. more of an angle. A little bit more of an angle. Wait till I start talking. Yeah, just a little bit more. Get ready. All doing more it of an once? angle. More of an angle. More of an angle. No, me first. Wait, wait. <laughs> Get ready for an epic high sea adventure with the yeah. highly wait, anticipated less, sequel there. to the indie sensation. Oh. <laughs> Can you? Nope. Damn. Next. Don't dodge. Steam World Heist. Take charge as Captain Lee yeah, and yeah. lead a ragtag. Wait, one at a time. <laughs> Liam. Next is Liam, oh. and lead a ragtag crew of steamboat, steambots through an intense turn-based gunfight where bullets ricochet with deadly precision. A turn-based tactical strategy. Oh. Oh. Nope. <laughs> You'll explore the great sea, find crew, upgrade right, abilities, go, go, go on heists, ready, ready. and find clues. Oh. 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 In my cancer. What is wrong? A turn-based strategy game. You'll explore the great sea, find crew, upgrade abilities, go on heights. Face it at him. Face it at him. Sorry. And find yep, 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 clues yep. to what's Rely causing on, steam on, bots yeah. to corrode. <laughs> right in the chin. <laughs> Good, this is a handcrafted. Yeah, like, this is this is a handcrafted, beautiful 2D world. No. Oh, no. Damn. With oh, with oh, characters that hurt. seem familiar oh, and batshit crazy. No. I want to get one. I want to get one. All right. Keep breathing. Right. Look at him being all professional. It's got to be like no. almost direct. <laughs> and, the, and the music. <laughs> Weirdly, I don't think these are accurate. <laughs> and the music, the music composed by Steam Power Giraffe, you'll be humming these tunes for days. St steam. <laughs> okay, I'm wrapping it up. Steam World 2 Heist is, Steam World Heist 2 is out now across all co console and PC platforms plus get a 10% discount on Steam until August 15th. You got a well forming on your map. Uh -huh. Aim, plot and plunder at bitly.com/bitly/steamworldheist2. Oh, and don't forget to check out our Steam World Heist 2 Everything is Content. Oh, yeah, right. ah! <laughs> My hand! You read this part. <laughs> protect you oh, wait, now. I'm going to protect you. Don't forget to check out our Steam World uh, Heist 2 Everything is Content on Monday, August 12th, featuring Talis and Jaffe and Ath Ashley Johnson on Twitch, YouTube, and Beacon. What is more, happening? Turn it more, more. Uh, featuring Talis and Jaffe. No more. Oh, <laughs> All right, let's graduate to D20s. Oh, no. <laughs> are you... Are you nervous? Oh, I'm terrified. Very thrilled that it seems we have found a way to potentially do this sooner rather than later and without it being by Ludinus's hand. I think the thing that I'm most concerned about is who I'll be without her. I mean, it's her magic that's 
keeping me alive. Yeah. If this goes poorly, it won't go poorly. I trust you all. Essek, Laudna is a really unique woman. Do you think that there's a way forward here that will keep her with us? That is what I'm trying to do. You tell me. It is a risk, like all great and uh, experimental magics are. <clears throat> um, if this Delilah is indeed a tether that keeps you here, then this ritual would keep you too tethered, but she would be bound within this anchor. In failure, the anchor becomes useless and she likely returns at her leisure vengeful. If we fail entirely, there is always a chance that it does sever your tie and both of you will be lost. <laughs> Knowing the risks involved, is it something you are still wishing to do? Hmm. Needs to be done. Very well. Oddly, I, I hope for either the best case or the worst case, because the middle option of her returning, well, that is, that is the worst case. <laughs> so you watch as you as you place it down. You can see as Essig is both no. guiding this. Essig is also funneling magic from one of these other instruments into the back of this. And as it does, you can see that little spectral chisel at the end begins to become solid. Um, where you kind of place it, almost like glides into the stone itself and carves through. So he's um, he's running a lot of things of this and letting you kind of just guide the intricacy of it, so you can concentrate on the rest of it around you. Um, and with your, how how are you uh, helping him? Behind, me, as I watch him sort of guide the the instrument around, uh, every time he almost makes a mark, I'm like, this isn't helping, actually. No, I think that's right. Okay. Is this better? Are you sure you want to do that? <clears throat> okay, good. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. Uh, thank it's you. Good. Thank you. I think I've got it. <laughs> Thirty-two. Okay, twenty-five was the DC. Okay. 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 <laughs> As the sweat beads down the sides of your face over the next twenty, twenty-five minutes. <laughs> with the with this. Yes. Okay. Um, Essek kind of gliding over and almost like a like a shattered puppeteer and an odd reflection of how you've always imagined Delilah existing around Laudna, but this time it's a hopeful image. Uh, the sounds of the arcane device is kind of grinding through the stone, burning through the smell of what almost has like a, a wet metallic scent at times. Others it has like a like a, 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 a soft sun ray on dust sort of a scent. This is so much effort in a and oh, I didn't want, I, Lana, this is, you guys have already been through so much with me, I, I didn't. Well, why this is a lot now? <laughs> uh, my stomach hurts. Do you need to go poo? Or... <laughs> okay. Do Don't let what she's saying no, stress you out. I'm not. Like, it's it's fine. like <laughs> once every, it's I have to climb fine. down a tree yeah, yeah, once yeah. every <laughs> month. Spit up the dust ball with all your bones. Like owl pellets. Yeah. Like poo. <laughs> Cheddar. <laughs> Chetney. Cheddars. You had it. Cheddars. Cheddars. <laughs> Blood nutters. That's a serious ritual. Blood nutters. Blood nutter cheddars. <laughs> You are quite well versed in the gorier aspects of existence. This might be a bit intense. <laughs> I start taking off my clothes, <laughs> getting wait, down to my. Wait, I don't like it. Nobody asked me. No one, no one. <laughs> listen, listen. Do you work better when it comes down to blood? It's better to be in your prime element. I'm just getting down to my skivvies. As it kind of gestures up into a far wall and a bunch of books kind of just fall off Start as a, a kind of rolling table that kind of is acting as a temporary gurney kind of shifts oh, over to the center. Yeah. Um, oh Lodna, are you still all right with this? It has, it has to be done. 
This can't happen again. Uh, is there any, like, a curtain or a, a pillow or anything in this room? She might need some lumbar support. Uh, no, there are definitely curtains. And I'm just gonna <clears throat> mage hand, rip it off the wall, and, like, oh, make sure the table's covered okay. so she's comfortable. I am not a surgeon by any means, so I have to rely on your specialty. Dr. With... Cheddar's. Oh, boy. Uh, Wait, you're the one that he's doing the surgery? He's doing Unless the... you have a, a better... He's really good with fine work. I mean, we've seen his, his carvings. And he's, he's great at metal. He's, he's, he's a master great. craftsman. I, I, I have Steady work. hands. Do That's we, right. Do, do you need an assistant? I don't know yet. If I start crying out in panic, that means I need help. Okay. This is a multi-stage ritual. Yeah. Mm. Each person can contribute to the ritual once. Oh. oh. Um, I take a chair <laughs> and I just I can... move it loudly across the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Step up oh on there. God. I take one of my my sharpest chisel. I oh. uh, ah, drag it across my hand, and then <laughs> flames come off of it. Gotta sanitize these yes, things. Yes, <laughs> sure. Yes. Don't worry, you won't feel. You gonna feel a lot. Just a moment, and he starts going in through some of his. Uh, looks like a, a a case of various alchemical compounds. Um, uh, this was gifted to me by a friend a while back. <sighs> Blows all this dust off of it, and you. <laughs> Um, opens it up and there's just a bunch of <laughs> vials and things put around there. You can see the little label on it that says Bernardo on the bottom. No! Hey! It just kind of uh, cool. <clears throat> goes through and pull, pulls out a, a pouch and kind of like pulls out the, this this mulch type material and says, uh, "The placement of this stone will have to be behind the stone." Right. So. If you want to apply this around where the mark of decision would be, it should numb the space to pain. I have dogs leap from my chest from That's time to time. Very high want a stick to bite on? <clears throat> I'll have a stick to bite on. Do you have a stick? He goes and takes the uh, the same chalk he's been using and kind of like you know moves aside a little bit of your uh, outfit and marks right beneath where the sternum is to where the incision will be. Uh, I will be conducting a binding ritual of this to your essence as it is being placed within. Uh, take care and um, wait for my signal for each point of its um, attachment. Sure. Are we going above the, bre the xiphoid process and cracking the breastplate, or are we going under? I do not think we need to break any bones to do this. I would prefer to go under. Okay. Whatever well, you tell me what is best for you, I suppose. I mean, does that thing open up a bunch? Like, have we seen a bunch of barn door action happen when you go crazy? Yeah, you have. That's I what I was thinking. It's more, more magic. It's pretty it might be oh, more malleable than we think. We could just drop an elbow in there and get that thing. Pretty brutal. Uh, what can you show me? <laughs> I rip a dog from my chest, I guess. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I think I was like, what up? <laughs> See, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, I just got to start scratching his little head. He's a good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good and your boy. chest just goes like <laughs> <laughs> afterwards. Yeah, See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think it's going to be that big of a problem. Can you keep that open? Can I? Can I? If you give it a try. I mean, you you are used to changing your physicality to terrify people. Like, yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. I lay down and I just take my my finger and I kind of give myself almost like an autopsy cut. Oh fuck! And give him the Y. Give yeah. it the Y, yeah. and then kind of like, peel like the back a little bit. Ha! <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, so, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. I just racial work. Just wipe your infection. lungs a little bit. Later. Wipe your heart. <laughs> dab, don't wipe. Oh, dab, really dab don't wipe. Much. Okay. Oh god. You gotta dab it. Gotta keep an eye on him though. He might. Okay. He might go RTA inside. Yeah. So oh god. I'm ready. As he begins like muttering the incantation under his breath, you see the tips of his fingers begin to glow. As he does, you can see from the instruments begin to weave almost like a silken thread of arcane energy that also begins to weave between his fingers. And he kind of winds it, spins it like a, a skein, almost, around his fingertips, just kind of focused on the crystal as he slowly hands it over to you. He just continues the incantation and gives you a nod. As you begin to bring it there, you see that one of the threads sticks to the crystal, and the crystal kind of glows ever so faintly, and the kind of thread just kind of faints in the air like this little hairline 
element of gossamer, Ooh. unmoved by air or breath, waiting. And as you kind of look towards it, you can see the thread that went into the crystal begins to slowly find purchase, kind of up and under the ribcage to guide you. I'm gonna take the, the wood chisel while I'm holding the, uh, the soul anchor, and I'm gonna draw a small incision along the inside of her organs and just collect some of her black ichorish blood. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna smear it on the soul anchor and cast like a, a blood maledict, mm -hmm. just to get it to ignite, and it'll it'll take on like a strangely lightly blue, like softly glowing flame on the outside of it, mm -hmm. off of her blood in my hands as we try oh, to push it in. Very cool. So you all watch tensely as Chetney begins to find place within her innards uh, to both fit this where it is, but also each of these silver threads, another one begins to emerge from the skein, kind of thread through this stone and then find a back of part of the ribcage as well. It's this slow, arcane stitching of this stone within the cage that's splayed to that when, it, when the final thread is pulled, it will knot itself together like finishing, Small hands. sewing together a, a carve and a piece of cloth. As you are laying there, the incantations turning into just a droning sound in the background, focusing down, you can feel the She doesn't like this. You hear a whisper in the back of your mind. What are you doing? Just turning the tides a little bit. You need me. You're absolutely correct. And you need me. Chetney, I need you to roll a medicine check for me. 20. 20? The DC was fucking 20. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is so, I'm so stressed. You did the right thing. You, you, did, you did the right thing. Right yes, because yeah. if you hadn't, yeah. we would have failed that. Just you did the right thing. Oh my god. Well, let's so. Pass out. Okay. <clears throat> Slowly and carefully, as these arcane threads begin to weave through the bones and flesh, uh, you can feel them cold at first, and the blue flame begins to create a warmth as the crystal begins to be placed within. It's, at first, a burning sensation, but then it becomes a warmth that you haven't felt in a long time, and you have flashes of memory back to the childhood of what it felt to be warm, to have that flicker of life that you don't really appreciate until it's gone. As the threads continue weaving through and the incantation continues, you watch as the arcane skein that Essex has crafted begins to tug and pull away, and as it does, it's almost like a cat's cradle. What you saw was a kind of a clustered series of threads pulls back into a woven network of intricate shapes and runes, like a geometric spider's web that pulls back, and as it tugs, you see the ribs begin to close up. A successful placement of the stone within. At that moment, <laughs> the rest you begin to watch as the blue flame begins to darken, as shadow begins to drift out of the open wound and into the air, a familiar dark shadow. <laughs> as this is pressing forward, as it starts, keeps muttering, and you can see he's not stopping the incantation, but his eyes are going wide and looking around at the rest of you. You can feel her now climbing out of the shadowed basement that she's been locked in these past few hours and is now starting to push towards the surface. It's kind of <laughs> sputters a little bit, and you see a little bit of like that black acre and blood kind of cough up out of her. Try and tap into something useful. I don't know if it'll work or not, but. Okay. Little little shocks start to hit as I hit the probability point. Uh, I was wondering if it's possible just to add as a bonus for the rest of this, for anyone who's got something for this, to mark uh, 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 Delilah with Mark of the Messy End. 
basically crits, or I, however however you you deem to use this, are now 18, 19, and 20 for the next six cent, seconds. Yep. I look oh, over at Oren. Got it. Cool. Just make eye contact with him. I, Seedling. I um, place That's my right. hand on the hilt, and I walk over and raise my hand up to your shoulder. If it goes wrong. It's not gonna come to that. You are surrounded by people who care for you and you have more love in your heart than Delilah has ever had in her long, cursed history. And flowers start to grow out of Orem's hand. Little red poppies again start to spread out on small tendrilled vines and wrap around Laudna's neck and spiral around her arm and down her body, beautifying the table that she lies on. And they glow with a subtle black light and Orm will hex Delilah. So uh, I need one of you to roll a wisdom check. It's considered a crit, so regardless of the DC, it's a success. So you watch as, as Essek is seeing you lean forward as you're concentrating, and you all watch as these sparks fling off. Uh, they emerge in kind of multitudes of odd colors, and then as they kind of shift to combine with whatever the shadow is, they shift into like a grayish mist with almost like silver specks throughout um, and begin to, in many ways, resemble some of the magic you've seen Essek control and manipulate since you went to Aeor with him. And his eyes even go wide more and kind of briefly make eye contact with you with like a, we'll talk about this later, <laughs> kind of head tilt. As you holding Seedly before you, all these vines begin to reach out and swirl and entrap. Uh, as they begin to grasp for the shadow, it's almost like the vines become shadow in their own right. And as they begin to swallow the shadow that is emerging from Laudna, uh, they solidify into blackened vines that hold it there, locking it like a dead plant over a wall. Um, as this happens, you all feel this this wave of warmth in the room, sourcelessly. There's no windows here. It's a it's a, a basement laboratory, but you feel a warm gust of wind that feels oddly welcoming, and you feel a familiar presence that you felt once before. As the shadow gets locked in, you hear within your mind. A scream. I will not be stopped. And you feel like the force kind of trying to keep through. Uh, you're trying to hold her back, but you all begin to see Laudna's eyes beginning to flutter and lull back. But as he pulls the final like thread closed on the binding of this uh, soul anchor into her chest and the final bit of the skein kind of drifts inside. He closes the book and says, we're almost done. The incantation's complete. Now, um, I need to, I need to initiate the actual anchor. And he puts his hand over the area on the chest that's been closed. At which point her back arches upward and you can see like, you're now in the middle of a fight. You're no longer present in the room. You withdraw back into shadow, and in this darkened space, you can see just the faintest flicker of blue flame and darkness around you. And you just float there in this cold space, and then out of nowhere. <laughs> she reaches for you, and you see Delilah, her hands around your throat, and she's just strangling you, strangling you pushing and holding towards you, her eyes locked on you. Her fingers begin to pull upward, like her arms divide. There's now hands on your throat, but a second form of hands rip off of the first set and begin to try and claw for your mouth. What can we like see, what can we see? You just see Laudna, like her back arching on this table, and Essek trying to hold his hand there as he can keep his eyes closed and begins muttering a secondary help? incantation. How do you want to contribute can, to can this? Can I put my hands on either side of Laudna's head and I'm going to try to force my thoughts down into her mind as well? Yes, you may. And I'm gonna see Delilah try to talk to her. Talk to you Delilah? do, Delilah. Yeah. As you push down into the space, you see kind of the the low flickers of blue flame and shadow around. And from your perspective, you get uh, a glance at the horizon, and you've been here once before. 
you see the shadowed outline of the, ch the building cityscape of a once dead white stone, just barely cast in grays and blacks around you. You see up above in the expanse the extending growth of the leafless tree branches as the blackened sun tree that you once burned together now grows once more in the darkness, now splintered in four different places, pushing past the burns that kept it at bay. And you see there the two fractured spirits of Laudna and Delilah Briarwood entangled and fighting. I'm gonna run to her. You float up next. Out of the corner of your eye, you see a welcoming light. A bright lavender spark kind of arrives. Imogen. Uh, I'm going to come up behind Laudna mm -hmm. and just send my energy through her and hold on to Delilah's hands, try to give Laudna my strength. And I'm going to look Delilah in the eyes. There's only two ways for this to end. You can't have her. Either you go into that anchor or you end. We're not making another choice. I've endured far worse than this. I know you have. This will give you a chance to fight another day. Go ahead and make a charisma check for me. Is there any way I can help? I was going to say, the only other person that has a contributor to this ritual is you, Lagna. How are you wanting to contribute to this? Okay, so kind of put my hands over top of Imogen's. Mm -hmm. Feel hers, it's like her ghostly spirit almost like intertwines with mine. I'm going to look at Delilah. And as she's choking me, I'm just gonna give a little smile. These years of being your puppet. It ends today one way or another. I think it's your turn. And I'm going to cast Void Puppet. Ooh, shit, this is a move. Oh, what a choice. <laughs> and so you see Every person who was hanging on that tree with me that day, their spirits like erupt out from Laudna's back and loop around and you see their spirits like stretch and almost begin like spaghettification and go and attach to Delilah's back as if they are puppet, sp puppet strings. 21. Plus. It was a 15 plus one for guidance and then one. plus five. Okay. As you're staring into her eyes, you hold on to her hands. All these spirits emerge and thin out into these strings that attach to the back of Delilah Briarwood. And from the distant shadow of Whitestone Spectre, hundreds of other threads Emerge until she has a network of every person that fell in that city pulling her from behind. There is a burning hatred in her eyes, a purple flame that grows brighter and more intense. You feel as if you had flesh in this moment, it would be burned away with just the piercing volume of hate behind them. As she opens her mouth to speak, and every single one of those threads pulls her away. As she gets pulled silently into the shadow behind, Essek presses his hands down onto Laudna's chest, finishes the incantation, 
Her entire body from the inside begins to glow, a vibrant purple glow, to the point where the rib cage itself is the only darkened spot. The rest of her flesh is now a light, like a lantern from the inside. Where her back is arched, her eyes and mouth fire out that same purple light, and that blackened shadow gets cast off like a torch to the darkness. As you pull your hands back, the light diminishes. Laudna's body relaxes, and Essek is pulled back and is kind of just floating in the air, looking down, his eyes scattered around, looking for any sign of success. She's there. Who's there? Who? Delilah. Delilah. She's there, but she's... She's yours. Oh! Oh! Puzzle the bitch! <laughs> Got her! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you look inward for a second, <laughs> and what you see is that burning hatred and that screaming, shadowed face, quiet as it blasts against and rails against this ancient Aeorian crystal that holds her, her flames, her shadow, drifting out like a sieve into the bone-like rib cage that contains her for as long as you walk this realm. And you look down upon this inside yourself, inside your spirit. She is entirely yours. Look at my hands. Do they look any different? Not particularly. <sighs> I'm going to attempt to conjure Pate, because he's been gone for a minute. <laughs> As you go to conjure him, you feel where once you had to borrow energy from this darkness inside you as a request, as a, a sharer. Now you siphon it from this crystal and you watch that purple flame in her hated expression dim as you draw from her as you please. <laughs> and so as you do, the shadow swirls in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Did I fuck it up? <laughs> Is this no. bad or normal bad? <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> we did. We're Who friends. the fuck are you? <laughs> oh, that's oh, him. I draw my weapon. No, hey! no, no. <laughs> it's Delilah, is it? No, no. <laughs> that oh. didn't come out of the green. <laughs> 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 I will attack. attack. Go ahead and roll an attack. <laughs> Oh, no, no. <laughs> just immediately just scatters. I just smited Delilah. <laughs> oh, Brace, you're so brave. <laughs> Thank you. That was Pate. Her hands are cold. But you felt her hands before. These are distinctively less clammy than usual. <laughs> Still <laughs> alright. <laughs> They're very much like just like yelling. room temperature. Yeah, you're just like. cold, but not yes. like. <laughs> what the fuck? I imagine if you like look faintly, maybe there's like a dull, like you know when um, like uh, you were a kid and you'd shine like a flashlight through your hand oh. in the dark, yeah. and you yeah, can kind of be like, yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah, see yeah. the veins, yeah. 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 There, <laughs> there is indeed uh, a... Yeah. Oh god, uh, yeah. I just learned something about boys. <laughs> no. Oh no. The, the Batwick. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Please tell me you weren't shining flashlights in your bowl. Absolutely. Oh, anything you can imagine. Yeah. 
<laughs> if it stretches, yeah. Flash Look, a lot, a, a lot of us grew up before the internet. So <laughs> we had a lot of time to pass. Uh, I, I, I never have, but now I don't know if that's going to happen. So like the power goes out at some point. Uh, shit, your phone has a flashlight on it. Yeah. yeah, some of us never stopped. By the Bony Stark. You've entrapped your patron. You're Damn. You are enemy Damn. number one. You can, just, you can pull her power, but she doesn't have to she help. That could have come in handy yeah. a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> she won't be. She won't be watching us anymore. I just kiss her. <laughs> oh, I kissed her. Can we get back together now? Yay! Okay. <laughs> I just hang my head. <laughs> <laughs> Two down. Okay. You look down because you feel Chet's hands around your ankle. And I'm taking one of my finishing chisels and I'm just carving into your ankle. <laughs> C, P, <laughs> oh, like I do it on all of my best works. Just tough it out. Oh, <laughs> P. See poop. See pop. Oh, see poop. Oh, see poop. <laughs> there we go. Ah. <sighs> You're in good company now. You know, only you, only you would I allow to do that. I know. <laughs> Some cult shit that just happened. You're welcome. <laughs> I think it's time for a round of what the fuck is up with you. Oh. Me. You. Yeah. Oh, this is her special day. I don't want to. Interrupt. But sure, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my family or originally came from the uh, the dynasty part of uh, oh. of the continent, and then we lived for a time uh, in the empire part. And now I sort of I rove about, but uh, I think my true home now is is the hells. How'd you find your mm. calling? Mm. Are you a religious person? I never have been, but definitely not. Uh, sometimes uh, the gods speak to you in a moment of, of great need or great triumph or great trauma, and uh, I'm happy to say that I, my, my lord reached out to me at a, at a low moment and, and brought me up again. So your lord was like, hey, I can help you right now? Yeah, I mean, it wasn't so like I a conversation like that, but I, I, I received a vision that I was meant for a greater purpose, and it gave me a, a goal to set myself to. That's nice. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I fell on hard times. I was, I was a devotee of the Platinum Dragon, and I was a, um, I served uh, his church and I uh, worked at a temple. I was I was promoted up the ranks quite high, highly. Actually, I was in charge of uh, security and uh, protection of of a temple um, in a place called Zadash. Um, and one day, the temple was attacked by two deceitful. People. Uh, <gasps> you fucking dick. Uh, yes, uh, a horrible goblin and uh, a, ni <laughs> a nightmarish uh, tiefling. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I let them in. I, I, they, they deceived me to gain entry, and I failed in my in my duties to protect the temple. How did you fail? What happened? Did they, they destroyed destroy the temple. They destroyed it? They destroyed it. Awesome. It's not gone, I mean, they set fire to it, they desecrated it, it was hor How horrible. How did they do it? Desecrate, desecrated. I, they painted, I was actually sort of confused when I got here to this home, because I saw there's dicks on the wall. There's literally a dick over his they shoulder carved into the wall. Dicks on the wall. They painted dicks. Yes, maybe it's. A, I, I, I guess it's a. It's a popular thing if it's here too. But um, they painted dicks on the wall, and I was blamed 
for the no. attack. Yeah, well, I failed to protect it. So. That's terrible. Were they caught, apprehended? I uh, know they're at large, and I will find them. That, I hope and you I do. And that was the Rude. experience that bent you towards the Lord of the Hells. No, no, I mean that <laughs> sort of started a downfall of sorts. Yeah. Maybe the the tiefling and the goblin that you spoke with, maybe they worked for the Lord of Hells. Mm. Maybe their whole purpose was to get you away from the planet no. dragon. Oh, oh, like he sent them as a test. Oh, as like a the, test, like or the or devil works in mysterious yeah, ways, yeah. sort of. Whoa. Oh, interesting. They they acted with such reckless abandon. It doesn't seem like. My lord has very clear motives and, oh, okay. and drives, and they were animals, really. Well, they must the have been, worst people in, on, the, on the planet. They must have been incredibly powerful and stout. I mean, you're stacked, and you've got armor, and you're, you're too bald flail. Like, that's, they must have just been absolute warlords. Yeah. Yes, they were. <laughs> well, then, I, I have the feeling that she she wanted you on your feet again. Oh. Feeling. If I have to deal with one more crazy bitch watching us when we're trying to bone, I'm gonna be <laughs> real fucking pissed. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop. I've been. <laughs> 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 if that's a, if that's a thread. <laughs> to find the code. <laughs> that's true. If alts. Alt names for yes for no I think alts I mean if the oh, primes if the primes are like mainstream uh -huh. I, I'd prefer to call the betrayer gods like indie alt oh indie gods yeah, yeah like yeah, alt yeah. gods like wouldn't you rather like be into alt, alt than like betrayer. Taylor Swift <laughs> how <laughs> dare you <laughs> do not <laughs> do not call that <laughs> community <laughs> on <laughs> us. <laughs> Summoning and then go back to flat earth. Back to flat earth, uh, please. My character, my <laughs> character. Not there will me. be a blip in this we'll episode, and no we one will know why. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Unfollow. Unfollow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one of the loftiest <laughs> Age of Arcanum wizards that ever lived. <laughs> Heroic. Yeah. Uh, we just fucked your life up, didn't we? I, I I really don't I don't know the answer to this. I mean, maybe maybe it was maybe it was when I. Killed Stanley. Who is that Stanley? This is Stanley. Your brain. I will smoke. Light it up. Smoke the pipe. It doesn't. Ha you don't have a lighter. What are you doing? <laughs> 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 oh, this is too loud. Oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. okay. Cool. So I yeah. do that. From your brain. I will smoke. Light it up. Smoke the pipe. It doesn't. Ha you don't have a lighter. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is too loud. Hold it over the pool. It's, it's a bubbler. It's not a bomb. Purple. It's not purple. I don't know what this. I don't know what it's shaped like. Yeah, what it, it's, it's just. It's just. It's, it's, just a, a, it's like a Gandalf. It's a Gandalf pipe. pipe. Oh, Gandalf. Sure. Gandalf. Del trombone. That's not a pipe. That's a trombone. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Okay, okay. I'm so glad. It hasn't been cleaned in a while, has it? Yeah. Blame, blame this fucker. That water is what dirty as fuck. What? God. So as, I'm as very familiar with sticky black tar substances. <laughs> it seemed fine to me. <laughs> you see, and like, as, as it says, he looks a little overwhelmed, but also he kind of smiles a little bit. He's like, you gave us liquor. Uh, it's been a bit since this house has been quite so raucous. <laughs> um, Looks over to you as the smoke that you coughed up around, like kind of just you know, just kind of spread out of the chamber, and it begins to form into shapes that are animated. Oh what god. do we see? Oh my god! I'm so into. We're this. gonna witness you skinning I, Stanley. Uh, yes, I guess you see <laughs> dark shit, man. I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bra. <Bruh. laughs> you s you see uh, uh, Breus uh, and. Uh, a very handsome uh, human uh, man uh, uh, waging battle uh, against um, sort of dark, uh, dark figures that you can't really make out. And uh, as as the battle rages on, uh, Stanley, uh, or the the man, <laughs> the handsome young man, uh, raises a dagger and stabs uh, Breus in the back. Um, and uh, holds up a, a shining symbol uh, of the Dawnfather. Um, and Breus uh, falls to his knees, but then climbs back up um, 
with pure willpower uh, and wipes the blood off of uh, himself and uh, is able to smite Stanley uh, uh, and takes his uh, takes Stanley's blood and paints uh, a large uh, portrait of Asmodeus um, uh, being stabbed in the back by the Dawn Father uh, oh, yeah. and uh, uh, with with the the blood splatter, yeah, all, all over the wall. That's an interesting interpretation. <laughs> uh, um, and uh, then, painstakingly skins Stanley, uh, and and oh. takes his skin and flesh and bones and uh, and makes it into a cup. Last name, wow. wow. Last name Krupp. Stanley. Wow. <laughs> it's a Stanley Krupp. It's about like fifteen minutes into oh. this vision, uh-huh. and when you're part way into the early flaying, I sit kind of. I'm going to just get some more no, cookies. No, 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 this is the best part. <laughs> How did you get the eye to do that? That's crazy. Um, and then uh, the vision will end with uh, with Breus, uh praying praying to the image he has he has made, um, and and praying and praying, but gets nothing back. Well, the the art was lovely. But how did you know about lewdness if 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 he's only been speaking to you in daydreams? I. <laughs> this is a celebration. <laughs> I, I have a question for you, Essek. The, yes. These portraits that are on the wall of you and your friends. Did you have these commissioned? Were they made by by you or? He glances. <laughs> Past uh, Breus or on the wall, there is a fantastic portrait that contains a, uh, a blue-skinned tiefling. And the young, he immediately like waves his hand, and a curtain goes over it. He's like, oh. um, uh, "Yes, I had them commissioned, uh, or my, my partner did. Yes, um, I'm going to need a private fair. room with Lana for a little bit. Oh, that's fair. Fair. I can, oh, no. I can stay in the stables. Fair. fair. No We're having makeup sex. Yep. I get it. Make up." As you tune to the cloak, you wear it over your shoulders, and it kind of settles against your the shoulders like a mantle, and kind of falls down the back. My muscular shoulders. Yeah, yeah you're rippling. Wow. <laughs> uh, as you feel the, the magical enchantment itself kind of tether itself to your your being. Oh, that's nice. Uh, the cloak kind of shifts and kind of draws tighter. Almost uncomfortably so for a moment. And what was once a cloak begins to wrap around your arm and around your torso, snaking around you, almost like a like a python that's grabbing and twisting and squeezing. Not to the point where it hurts, but just enough where it's uncomfortable and worrying. Your fight or flight begin to kick in. You hear all the scales kind of shh as they slither around your body. Eventually it comes to stop, and you look down. And the kind of burgundy scaled texture is now entirely wrapped around your body from like high neck to wrist. Like a an odd reddish rust colored bodysuit made up of scaled armor. <laughs> How will you be naked all the time? <laughs> oh, oh, Which is the werewolf process I like, know. like I know. <laughs> does it but does it Never expand? Seen the reptilian werewolf. <laughs> does it expand when you when you turn into a wolf? You're gonna be like Omar in a turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If I if I touch it with my fingers or if I stand up and do like some jumping jacks. Do I notice anything? No sound. No sound. Oh. The scales of the armor are quiet. What? They feel almost like a second skin. Dang! Rip, rip a fart. See what happens. Does it sound does it stay in there? Oh yeah, just like a bubble go up. Oh no, it doesn't block farts. <laughs> just traps it, traps it in there and travels yeah. up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Gotta squeezy that out. Hey y'all! New vibe coming out. Wow. Oh. You notice a little boop right here. Do you, I mean, little. like, how far? Is that does, comfortable? This is just for my own personal knowledge. Yep. Is it like your wang is just shaking around? No, and no, it's, it's coated. Tight. No, I know, well, but is it, is it like you have is a it, dance belt? Is it or? coating your skin, or is it like, you know, cupping you? Well, let's give it a look. I do a cartwheel in front of the fire. <laughs> okay, so so it's <laughs> it does look like 
I guess the best way to describe it, like, like kind of like that, that that Aquaman kind of like yeah. scale male bodysuit. Okay. It has that kind of a texture, but it's like a rusty red burgundy coloration. And my muscles look All a over. little bigger. Wow. Mm. Well, we just want to know if we can see the outline of his penis. Yeah. Like faintly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but it's cut. a little bit. But is yeah. it down like one one leg, or is it? I right always go to the left. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't hang as low as I was expecting. Yeah. Cool. If I if I get stuck with it to the right, it's a bad day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so everything feels off. Yeah, it's gonna throw off like your alignment. Have you, know? you ever done it? Yeah. I, I, I'm not here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> she came down. I guess she got bored. Oh, I thought this was the morning. <laughs> <laughs> She got four. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a little bit. She's rusty. She's okay. water. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks good, right? It's a vibe. Yeah, I think it's good. Sorry, I kind of want to hit stop. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you go it. like get hit? Oh, yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody hit me with something. Oh, yeah, for sure. I'm going to punch him as hard as I can on the shoulder. Okay, one more time. It's not on my face! <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to say, actually. No. <laughs> I will see. What do you do if you have to take a leak in a hurry? You just have the buttons. I don't know. Maybe if I focus really hard, the <laughs> scales will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try. Try, oh, but I'm not trying. here. All right. Try, but maybe not here. Where's the. Essek, where's the pisser? <laughs> Glides down the stairs. Uh, if you're looking, it's out the back to the side. There's um. Back's good enough. I'll just go out of the back door and. Release! <laughs> <laughs> Standing in a patch of green beans. It just fills the suit. Oh no! <laughs> I'm pissing my suit! Yeah. Oh no! What? <laughs> what if I got a, what if I got a shit? <laughs> well, we have our oh answer. no! Can do you, wait, can you, do get you it will, off? Do you will an opening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Ew. Oh. Oh. We could use that somehow. Essek, <laughs> where's your pool? Or fountain? Or anything? Uh, if you need the washroom, it's on the second floor. Oh, shit. Uh, you're going to dribble all I'll try and climb the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Roll that bug check. Natural 20! <laughs> Fruit 29. With grace and a plume, you climb the exterior of the household. Uh, uh, just to get the high point to look over the oh, head. An older woman who's like pruning her head just going. (laughs) You haven't reclosed the suit, by the way, so you're just kind of flapping there, and she's just like. (laughs) Runs inside. (laughs) Ma'am! I pull out a a rock and I lift it up. Um, Mr. Widowgast, we're at your house with Essek. He's cool. Uh, a lot to talk about. Heading to see Keyleth, we think. You okay? I'm sure Essek can talk to him whenever he wants. But I did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> to which a moment later you hear. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit sore recovering from a very long day. Glad you met. He is um, a good man. Don't touch anything that's mine. And within a moment's clap of his hands, you feel the. <laughs> you all uh, emerge onto another continent. In this space, it is still. Night, earlier to later evening, Mm. and the ground itself around you is broken and craggy. The immediate smell of smoke and fires surround you. As your eyes focus in, you can see the walls have toppled and crumbled, towers destroyed. You can see flames burning and flickering in war-torn piles of ruin around you. You can see shapes moving and skittering or climbing and gathering on the outskirts of what was once the West Side encampment. You all immediately arrive somewhere else, landing the smell of ruin and blood and 
fiendish victory still kind of lingering through your nose as you all emerge, your feet sinking into some cold and somewhat damp earth. The temperature is immediately chiller. We were barely gone. As we're walking to the sanctuary, can I just take Essex's hand as we're walking and say in his head, Thank you. I didn't get a chance to say it earlier, but what you've done for us is immeasurable. It takes a minute and responds in kind. I wish I could say it was purely altruistic, but I'm still working to burn the rest of the guilt off my soul. Mm -hmm. So, thank you all for being for being the bastions of goodness that you are. You know, <laughs> in the face of acknowledging how complicated each one of us is. I don't know what you did in your past, but I can't say I'm not grateful that brought you here. Whatever little bit can help. And you can see on these banners, there's the, uh, the the crown and owl of the Tundalian Empire. You can see the crest of the Taldori Council. You can see the symbol of Ankarel. You can see the, uh, the symbol of the, con the Clovis Concord of the Menagerie Coast. Um, Essek freezes up and falls back a bit. Friends, I think this is where our journey ends. And you catch his eye line to a banner, and what you see on the banner uh, this kind of grayish tint to it, and it looks to be a dodecahedron symbol with like an, a figure eight drawn through it. Oh, wow. We're trying to the house. Yeah, we can't ever go back. Pass caught up with you. On occasion, it does. Well, I do not think this will be the last time we meet, but for now, it has been an honor and a pleasure. We'll see you again. Look forward to it. If we wanted to reach out, how would we do that? You're clever. I think you'll find a way. Besides, this one can talk to my boyfriend, so. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, speed down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a fun day. Oh, what a day. Longest day ever. Wow. <laughs> As it kind of looks to you and says, be careful, you're a heartbreaker. And turns around Ooh. and begins to glide down the stairs. Other soldiers kind of like crowd up a bit, and he kind of like gives a hand motion, and they all kind of separate and let him pass as he descends awesome. back down the stairs. I'm telling his boyfriend, <gasps> heartbreaking. Oh, it's just you can look at the menu as long as you order from home. <laughs> <laughs> Also know Caleb's predilection, so. <laughs> oh. 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 I wrote it that way, come on. As you begin to step within the sink. I led the way from Fern's shoulder. Mm. Got it. Oh. So that I can be spotted. I'll be okay. behind them. Okay, great. You're pushing through the crowd and like some soldiers are starting to look at each other. People are starting to have that concerned look of like, who are these people sorry. pushing through? Uh, Fern, a heavy hand <laughs> grabs your shoulder. Whoa. Um, I see heavy, like I put stone my hand on, fingers on the weapon, just okay. in case. Something is grabs like, "Excuse me, just who do you think you are?" <laughs> and you kind of glance around and see this this tall, like incredibly muscular, older-looking uh, half giant, um, tattoos on his body, uh, massive black, gray-streaked beard. Oh my! Um, oh, it's just holding you there and says, "Were you invited?" We work directly for the voice of the Tempest out of Zephra. <laughs> um, hold on. You say you know the voice? <gasps> no. Do we have a problem no. here, friend? <laughs> Is this do we? I don't know. Do we? Oh, I've been looking for a fight over. Wait, 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 wait. Hi, hi. We're supposed to be here. How are you? Um. I'm okay. <laughs> My name is um, uh, Professor Emperor 
Professor Emperor. Fern Kelly. It's like a bunch of villain. Yeah, (laughs) Professor Emperor. (laughs) We're here to see the the voice of the Tempest. (laughs) Um, see, the problem is, I happen to be very close friends with the voice of Tempest, and I don't know who you are. And I was told to throw out anybody who we don't know. We have an appointment. Well, we 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 met her at. West He's side. like pushing Fern wait, out wait, of the crowd. Wait, wait, wait! This was a he, personal bodyguard of hers. Uh, a voice goes, "Wait!" He says, "What? Well, do you know them, Pikey?" <laughs> and it's, we're going and uh, for those of you that were in the brief visit in Whitestone, you see uh, Pike Trickfoot in full Everlight. Oh, wait, wait, there's someone. That, yeah. We know her. Hey. We know her. Grog, I know them. It's okay. It's like. <laughs> I didn't know that. Just tell me if we're having guests next time. <laughs> Good day. Good day. Good day. He's got a little gut. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Muscle gut. Yeah. Yeah. Muscle yeah. Yeah. Belly. Oh, Where's it well? Are you like, yeah. like Fat Thor? Are you like? No. I know. No. 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 He's just got like just a little beer belly. Yeah. You see, like, like, like the yeah. point where the the, the belt of of dwarven. Uh, you know, fortitude around his belt. Like there's, there's a little like overlap. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's solid under there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a weight belt that like was bought, you know, 30 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. So you can still get them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit peeking out the top and bottom. That's just power. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the power is. Like, tom tom. Well, if you're friends of Parky, you're friends of mine. Grog, could you? And he goes right away. Move it! And like pushes people aside. The voice kind of looms out a little bit in the the chatter in the room as it echoes through. Kind of stops for a second. And as you kind of see through the crowd, there is a uh, like lowered in the middle of this massive forum chamber. Uh, forum chamber. There are a number of chairs and places, and you can see there are what what was a forum meant to maybe facilitate. Uh, a few dozen people conversing is deeply overcrowded now. There are multiple soldiers and associates and representatives um, and people from all over. You see um, there is a, an elven figure in long silver and blue robes that seems to be sitting on the kind of the highest of the thrones here, probably a representative uh, of the, uh, the sanctuary itself. You see um, in kind of a long red, uh, like sleeveless robe that kind of dangles past uh, their chair, the uh, incredibly intimidating uh, Earthbreaker groom that you had met yes. previously, oh. um, cool. kind of sitting arms on the side of his particular chair. But it was just the same. You see um, what looks to be this this incredibly uh, dressed like half elven woman with a, a massive cluster of white and golden hair that kind of falls past her shoulders below in abundant leaf-covered robes, um, who looks to be sitting upon a particular throne that iconography-wise resembles the Wild Mother. Um, you can see there are numerous seats here that are placed to represent various Pantheon temple heads, and they are all filled currently, um, and then throughout them are numerous other seats. You, you see, uh, um, for the for the the matron's representation here, not a single seat, but three. You see three women in dark black veils that cover their faces in robes that all kind of sit as a trio. Um, you see, sitting at a number of the other chairs, a very tall, uh, kind of gender fluid looking figure um, with darker skin, long black hair, and simple attire with eyes that burn like coals. <laughs> You see a figure dressed in white and silver intricate robes with uh, shoulder armor that curl upward at the Ooh, edge. Yeah. You see her with a crown that has three curved ibex-like horns that curve back behind, oh, yeah. no and a darker a lavender skin of uh, what looks to be a dark elf figure, and a number of uh, guards at her sides that wear a uh, chitinous, like insectoid, dark metal armor that looks uh, terrifying as it does unique. Um, you see Allura and Kima, who you have met previously, sitting amongst the crowd that make eye contact with you, and 
you can see an elation come over their face. Um, and a number of other figures that you don't recognize. You do recognize those two. You see a dwarven woman in royal attire, or at least you recognize them. Those of you who are in the Wildmount split crew um, recognize Queen Furnast and King Talviel yes. of Uthodurn are also present at this council. This is a gathering of Exandria. Wow. Present. Day. Everyone is here. And as Grog has pushed past the crowd and kind of gave an opening in that one moment, all of Exandria looks to you. And that's where we're going to end. <laughs> nope. Oh, he's so dumb. He's so dumb. He's so dumb. He can write a little now. Yeah, he can. Yeah. Wow. Mike's been teaching him. He just did English. He just. Oh, God. Okay, Graham Fubon himself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I really thought he was going to respond to Professor Emperor. I did too. I was, I was really... like, well, let me give him a long title. So yeah. He'll... He was a little confused by it at the moment. <laughs> good boy. Professor. What a good boy. Wowzer. He was doing his job. <laughs> He was, he was given a task, yeah. Yeah.